Publicis Group, the world's third largest advertising and communications group, reports results for the third quarter. Maurice Lévy, welcome. Bonjour. You are the CEO of Publicis Group. What are your comments on your organic growth in the third quarter? We have to be blunt and to look at the things uh, with uh, objectivity. Q3 growth numbers are not good. 1% growth. It is a slight improvement compared to Q2 but it is far below what we could expect and what we can deliver. I cannot tell you that I'm happy with such numbers. It's not the level of my expectation and what Publicis Group can deliver. The reason for that performance are many. There are some issues on emerging markets, some issues of uh, in in uh, Razor Fish, some issues in uh, other operations, but the reality, if we look at the fact, is that we have been too much focused on a project and not enough on short term issues and growth. This is now behind us. We are back and we are aggressively looking at growth, and I can say without uh, a hint of doubt that uh, this is old story and we move forward. When looking at the major geographical zones, are you seeing any signs of pickup in the US or in Europe as we head into the fourth quarter? If you look at uh, the economy, it is extremely contrasted today. Europe, you see good news and bad news almost by the day, and you see some uh, ups and downs again almost by the day. So it's extremely difficult to say that uh, the market will pick up seriously in any given region of the world. However, we will uh, certainly count on good growth in the UK. I'm speaking about the market, not our performance. Stabilization of um, Germany and uh, France small pickup in Spain, and all the rest will be difficult. That's for Europe. In the US, depending on the sectors, uh, we can expect some nice growth in consumer goods, and we can expect good growth on IT, telco, and um, digital technology. We can also expect certainly some good recovery on financial uh, services, where we expect that banks will continue to invest. In emerging markets, what is your update on Brazil, China, and India? Uh, China is facing a slower recovery than expected, and uh, the transition to the consumer economy is more slower and take much more time than expected initially. So I have some doubt on uh, the time where China will be uh, firing on all engines. Uh, India, we had a very good third quarter. However, I'm still in doubt with the recovery in the country, and I believe that uh, we will see a slow peak, progressive, and we should not expect to see a major change in the trend. For Brazil, we have to wait for the election, uh, which is coming soon, and uh, we will see what will be the first decision. I don't believe that Brazil will be again on um, high single-digit numbers, and I think that at best what they will do in 2015 and at the end of this year will be low single-digit. You've previously briefed the market on the digital transformation of your company, but traditional or analog business still remains a big chunk of the pie, which is declining quarter after quarter. Can you give us some commentary today about how successful you are at stalling the decline of this part of your business? This is one of the major explanations for our poor performance. And uh, we have uh, a growth in this area, which is negative. We have a decline, to use the right word. Uh, negative growth is something which is always surprising me. And um, uh, we are seeing some uh, slowdown in uh, uh, the decline, and we see some action which have been taken by our agencies, which I believe are very good. 
we have done some changes, and we are making some very important changes in our organization, in the way we run it, in the way we are working. We have broken down the silos, and we are working on a very different approach. So I, I am personally extremely confident about the possibility of delivering some very good uh, result on this front. And this will not happen in the coming months, but I'm pretty sure that our performance will be positive in this field in 2015. What is your update on your digital business and on your ability to return Razorfish to double-digit growth after you've recently merged it with Rosetta and streamlined PBC's group from four digital agencies down to two? Razorfish has faced some serious difficulties. Uh, on the one hand, the Razorfish has uh, some heavy large one-off contract which came to an end and that was normal but the pipeline of renewing this has not been working. The second aspect is that the loss of uh, Motorola or the fact that Blackberry has, has trimmed the budget to move from consumer to professional or some other accounts which have reduced dramatically their spending all this has a very bad effect on the number of uh, uh, Razor Fish. The end result is that uh, Razor Fish has an impact on the group numbers of 200 business points. So we had to take some action, and what we have done is to restructure Razor Fish and to move to a new offering under the leadership of Tom Adamski, CEO of Rosetta. Tom has done a fantastic job as CEO of Rosetta, and we are bringing together Razorfish, Rosetta, and some key assets from Nurun to create Razorfish Global. New offering, new organization, and I'm pretty sure that as we have close to double-digit growth at Rosetta, we will get the same kind of growth with the new Razorfish Global. This will end up with, in fact, two very strong international global digital agencies, Digital SLBI, Razorfish Global. I feel very good. On top of that, we have to notice two important factors. The first one is that despite the fact that Razorfish has not delivered on growth and has even more declined, we have a 9% growth on all our digital operations. So we see that our digital operations are working extremely well, growing fast, and delivering and winning. So we, we feel very good about this. And the total chunk of digital business is now close to 42%. So we see that our strategy is working. And the hiccup that we are facing with Razor Fish is something which is momentary and which will not last. So I feel extremely confident with our digital operations. You recently had some notable account wins, Samsung, for example. Would you care to update us on what some of these wins mean for future growth? Thank you for your question. It's a very important one. The fact that we have not paid enough attention in new business has been reflected in our numbers. And the poor growth that we have is not only the fact that some of our advertisers have reduced their investment, it is also the fact that we have not won enough. This is now past story, and we are moving to a new story. That new story began with the Samsung pitch. All the holding company have been invited, 16 agencies have been aligned, to participate in that pitch. All this has been published, and I'm taking this information from the trade press. What do I see? Four different pitches. The four pitches, Publicis has won on each one. Network with Leo Burnett, Media with Starcom, Boutique with BBH, and Digital with Rosetta, and the combination with uh, Digitize. So I feel extremely good about our ability to go back to the front line and to win on the new business. 
we have changed the way we are approaching new business, and we have changed the way we are servicing our client. And on most of our clients, we are breaking down the silos, we are creating new teams, and we are delivering on all integrated services at once. All this is delivering very good results for our client and helping us to grow with them. So I feel very good. And what you can expect is that we will be much more aggressive on your business in the months to come. Since we're speaking of brands, there is a trend among large consumer goods conglomerates to streamline their number of brands, which leads to fewer overall brands out there. What's the impact for advertisers such as yourself? Does this mean fewer opportunities as brands disappear? This trend of reducing or streamlining the number of brands by a consumer good company is something which is not recent. It, it's a process which started at the end of the 80s, beginning of the 90s, in order to be prepared for global competition and having brands which can compete on a global scale. In some cases, these brands are just folded under an umbrella brand. In some other cases, the advertiser considers that it's much better to sell them. The end result is that we can grow on some, in some areas, and we can see some of the brands sold to competitors' uh, clients. There is also a good news in this. It is the fact that you see a few Chinese brands and some Japanese brands and some Indian brand and some Brazilian brand coming to the market with new stand and new objective and new uh, ambitions, which is to take market share from the long established uh, global Western brands. I think it's healthy and it is also a very good opportunity to grow our business. So I cannot say that um, uh, this uh, kind of strategy is something which is uh, uh, negative for us. There are some areas where it is positive, some areas where it is less positive. But one thing which is clearly positive is that the brands are there to last. There is more brands which are competing today. And there is a clear intention coming from the emerging market to build their own brand and to compete on a global scale. On September 16th, you promised the market a strategic update at an investor day to be held at the end of October. Do you have anything to announce today? Yes, there is a rendezvous, which is November 7, on webcast. We will give all the detail in due course. What we will do at this presentation is threefold. The first one is the detailed plan to arrive to our objectives for the 2018 plan, which is, on the one hand, to have a growth which is higher than the market by 100 basis points. And uh, on the, the other hand, it is how we are going to improve our margin by at least 200 basis points. That is topic one. Topic number two will be on our acquisition and investment strategy and how are we going to uh, go to market on that front and how much money we will be investing. Point three will be shareholders' compensation. Uh, share buyback, if any, dividend, how much, and any other means of compensation. All this will be presented, I remind you, on November 7, through webcast. And lastly, what is your guidance and outlook for the rest of this year? With a performance such as ours in the nine first months of the year, it is extremely difficult to forecast something which is much better. So we can expect to be roughly in line, hopefully slightly better, for the full year. We will be focusing on two aspects. One which is to work on our margin in order to deliver the strongest of the industry. The second is to work on 2015 uh, commitment, budget if you prefer, 
and making sure that 2014 will be soon forgotten. We have some very good reason to believe that we can deliver very good performance on growth and on margin. Some of these good reasons lie also on the fact that we have a very strong balance sheet, which will give us room for maneuver. And we have also a generation of cash flow, which is extremely strong, and I guess the best of the industry. So when you take all these elements into account, you can feel comfortable and confident for your end numbers, as well as for a good 2015. And I'm pretty sure that our investors, like us, will soon forget the relatively poor performance of 2014. Maurice Lévy, CEO of Publicis Group, thank you very much. Thank you, Adrian. Merci.